Hey, welcome back. We are continuing our um, study of program flow instructions, and uh, this is example number two. If you watched example one, then there's not going to be a whole lot of surprises in this video. And really, that's the idea. Um, that a lot of these jump, these uh, conditional instructions, uh, are uh, just very similar. Like you, you need the status flags, the VNZC status flags. And uh, we're not going to go through all of the different combinations that we can go through. So I'm just giving you a couple examples. And again, once you get a couple under your belt, then uh, these should all be very uh, straightforward, I think. So this is going to look very similar to the previous example. In this example, we're going to work on a conditional jump with the zero flag. And uh, you'll see some code there to the left. And uh, I'm not going to use a CCS in this video for the sake of uh, uh, brevity and also flow, uh, let the, let the fly, slides flow a little bit better. But I encourage you to work through uh, this in CCS, use the memory browser, use the register window, and uh, step through the code or step into the code um, as we go through this. Now, uh, you'll notice that if, if you're using CCS, uh, that the, the program counter will appear to start at 440A um, for the MSP 430FR6989. The program memory, if you recall, begins at 4400. And so what, what uh, happen, what's happening here is that CCS inserts two instructions in the main pro, uh, before the main program. Uh, they're labeled reset and stop WDT. And uh, if you look at those two instructions in the, uh, in pro, in, uh, in the memory browser, you'll see that together there are five words or 10 bytes or 10 addresses. And so if you do the math and program memory begins at 4400 and you add the 10 addresses, the next available address is 440A. Uh, which is why the program counter would be beginning there in our program. Um, yeah, and so you can search for that. You can verify all of that in the memory browser. You can bring up the labels reset and stop WDT, and you can check out their, their words for yourself. Again, there are together five words. But when we uh, begin our program here, um, the first thing we're going to do is move a byte uh, zero into register four and register four is going to indicate to us which uh, jump we took later on in the program then in the main routine uh, we're going to move 98 into register five and then the next line we're going to compare the number 99 with the contents of register five and in this case 98 and 99 uh, are not equal and so this and here's the key, results in a zero flag equal to zero. And that's because the compare instruction is subtracting 99 and 98 and looking at the result when it, sa when it says, may when, it, when it decides whether those two things are equal or not. So, so it, behind the scenes, the status register, if it was not already cleared, uh, for uh, the Z flag is now storing Z equals zero after that compare instruction. All right, so the program counter marches along and it gets to uh, this jump if zero instruction. And uh, there's no zero, right? Z equals zero, so there's no jump. And again, the PC program counter marches right along. It gets to JNZ, which is jump if not zero. Since there's no zero, right, then we're going to jump to the label, it's not 99. If you're doing this in CCS, and I hope you are, then you'll notice here that the program counter jumps several addresses, and that's because it jumps the move instruction and the jump instruction in it is 99, it jumps over those. All of that is stored in program memory, okay? It's just that the PC counter, or the PC counter, the, the program counter has to jump over those instructions. 
All right, so then uh, we would enter into the it's not 99 routine. And uh, we have a, we're moving the number 2 into R4. So that's going to indicate to us in this simple example that we are, in fact, in that it's ni not 99 routine. So you can look at R4 on your own in the, in the register window and see that now R4 is containing the number 2 in decimal. Then uh, we hit an, an unconditional jump back to the main. Uh, again, if you're doing this in CCS, you will notice the PC address decreases because uh, we're going back in memory. We're going back up the program. Uh, so it decreases and it now stores the move address there in the main routine. And you can verify that in the memory browser. Again, you can, you can search the, the uh, the memory addresses and you can look for the memory label main. Now let's suppose we changed the number 98 there to the number 99. Let's do that. Let's debug it then, run it, and step through the program. Now when 99 is compared with 99, the zero flag is set. Again, that's the new piece here, or one of the new pieces, I guess. Um, uh, the compare operation is, is subtracting the, the two items in the operand, 99 minus 99. So the ALU throws up the Z flag, say, yep, I got Z equals 1 now, 0. So then uh, the program counter marches along. It gets to the, uh, the jump if 0 instruction. And this will jump to the address labeled it is 99 since the zero flag is up. The, the PC will jump past the address of JNZ. Thus, uh, so it enters the it is 99 routine. And then in that routine, the number one is moved into register R4. Thus, uh, and you can verify this, of course, in the register window. And then that shows us that, yes, we did enter into that routine. And the program counter marches along and then hits that jump uh, instruction. That's an unconditional jump. So the program doesn't end and it goes back up to main. And again, you'll see in CCS that the program counter address decreases and stores once again that move address and you can verify that in the memory browser you can look at the location of main in memory it will say main all right that's it for this simple example and i'll see you next time when we're going to be looking at how we can implement while and for loops in assembly so thank you very much